Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-44. Our previous episode featured the quartet of Grish, Omel, Stance, and Harris discovering that Yolanda had been injured, but she and Phidias were in the hands of the respected healer named Sarcona. The witch would not allow the men to visit their friends until she confirmed their identities with the wounded pair and were sent upon their way. After a restful night, the men rose to wander the town until they received notice about the injured associates. We join them now as they pass down a long street leading to a rough looking ship's dock. A lot of taverns for a small town pointed out Sir Omel, and not very many people either. The group nodded in acknowledgement to the comment, as well as several ladies watching them cautiously as the rough delvers passed. This is a mining colony, quipped Grish. Hard work means getting drunk at the end of the day. That's where the majority of the men work, in the mines. Brother Stance and Harris the Mage inquired as to the mining operation of Tigos Vale, and were told that most of the silver for the Denali Kingdom was mined in this location. He continued and explained that the miners ship their findings to Saydown City once a month and are compensated with food and other goods. The group noticed that as he spoke, Grish looked around a great deal. Is there something bothering you, Grish? asked the Knight of Bacchus. Grish replied and pointed out that the scuffle back in Saydown was bound to have negative consequences. He added that it would be best if they avoided any green guard encounters in the event that advanced word had been sent. As he finished speaking, the quartet reached the beach where the main dock was. Wooden planks led over the sand of the dock that extended into the ocean, and a ship was spotted on the horizon. A pair of grizzled old men sat in the sand, apparently awaiting the vessel to arrive. As the adventurers approached them, the old men turned and examined them. Well, aren't you a strange group? remarked one of the men in the common tongue. Yes, we are, but we are friendly. How are you, gentlemen? asked Brother Stance of the Verte Order. The men replied that they were well and were just awaiting the Republic, the ship that takes silver and drops off goods from Saydown. As they spoke, they puffed on a strange tobacco pipe and inquired as to the group's business in Tigos Vale. Sir Omel took over the conversation and explained that some of their associates were in the care of Sarcona the Witch. The old men nodded and pointed out that the friends were in good hands. If she cannot cure what ails them, no one can, pointed out one man. Grish spoke up and asked who would be present on the Republic. The men looked at each other puzzled and pointed out that they were only general laborers arriving on the boat and inquired if any of Grish's associates were expected. Embarrassed, he noticed that he still wore the mark of the station, and he fumbled for an answer. Harris interjected that the captain of the Green Guards was only present in Tigos Vale as an observer, and thought that some of his men may come looking for him as an exercise. Exercise? queried one of the old men. Sir Omel spoke up next, and pointed out that Grish was a prize to be found under a routine military exercise, and expects his men to find him on their own. He added that no assistance should be given to the soldiers if they inquired about their leader. The old men scoffed and pointed out that the Green Guard was not highly thought of in this area anyway. Grish bristled under the insult and began a retort, but was stopped short. Harris intervened and pointed out that the military exercise was only to find Grish and nothing more. The men seemed nonplussed, and the mage added, while you may get them out of your town faster by telling them where Grish is, you'd probably rather laugh at their ineptitude at not being able to find him. Raucous laughter escaped the elderly men who began to choke and cough on their tobacco smoke. You are certainly right about that, young spellcaster, replied one of the men. 
They pointed out that it was unlikely that any of the Green Guard would be on the ship. Grish should make himself scarce, just in case. The quartet considered the sage advice and began a hasty retreat to one of the shops on the strip, where they were concealed, but could view the occupants of the vessel after it landed. Less than an hour later, several dirty men arrived at the docks as the Republic reached the planking. The ship was moored successfully, and multiple sailors exited, heading straight for the nearest tavern. Grish asked where the shop's proprietor was, and if he could go to the dock and see if there were any military members aboard the vessel. After a few gold pieces were given to her, the shopkeeper quickly moved towards the dock. I don't see any guards, reported Harris, and here comes the merchant. The lady returned and spoke with Grish. He translated and said, she says only the captain is left on board and the coast is clear. The group exited the shop and started to head back to their inn to see if any word had arrived when a booming voice called out behind them. Well, well, if it isn't the mighty captain of the guard. The foursome spun around quickly wielding their weapons and assumed defensive stances. A man, every bit as large as the Zenobian, dressed in flashy clothing, stood fifteen feet away from them with his hands on his hips. Grish reholstered his weapon in his belt and put his hands on his hips. The stranger began to advance in a wrestling posture, causing Stance, Omel, and Harris to become concerned. As the strangely dressed man began to hurl insults at the cleric, Grish stood his ground, looking nonplussed. Sir Omel shifted nervously, gripping the hilt of his blade upon the approach of the other man. When the pair got within five feet of each other, the other man grabbed Grish around the chest and began to kiss him on the cheek until he got shoved off. A pair, you ass. I heard you were sailing the southern seas, said Grish with a large smile. I was certain the gods would grant me the wish that I would never see you again. The sea captain laughed deeply, followed by Grish doing the same. Stance, Harris, and Omel looked at each other quizzically. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.